Imagine. Imagine a 40-year-old man on his bike. He's approaching a railway crossing, and suddenly there's this sound. And then there's silence. This man was my great-grandfather. He was deaf. He couldn't hear. And his death and this story had a huge impact on my life and still resonates today. I started to investigate the difference between hearing and listening, between sound and silence. But most of all, I did my research on the power of sound. Now, the power of sound, it might seem obvious to most of you guys, but did you know that when you were in your mom's belly, I don't know if you remember, but trust me, you were there, your eyes were closed, but your ears, your ears were already open and always been open since that day. The very first sound that you ever heard mother heartbeat. And then once you're out there and you're on this planet, sound has a physical power as well. It can literally touch you. Right now I'm producing frequencies. I am touching you. I'm touching your ears at a speed of 343 meters per second. But then it's important to know when you're out there, that there's this difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is what you do in a passive way with your ears, but listening, that's what you do in an active way with your brain. We can even tell the difference between cold and hot water if you really listen. Pretty amazing, right? Now, I don't want to over-rationalize over sound, because in the end, sound is emotion. Or... Now, not can sound only evoke an emotion, sound can even evoke an entire universe. Right now, I'll play to you a fragment of less than one second, and you'll have instant recognition and association, an entire world in front of you. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Now, after hearing the sounds, I am wondering, I am really wondering, how often do you actually listen to your surroundings in this active way? How often do you listen to your surroundings and how is it organized in terms of sound ecology? To help you answer this question, let me guide you through the world of sounds. There are three types of sounds on our planet. First, there are the sounds produced by natural sources, Mother Earth, so-called geophony. Geophony, non-biological sounds. Now, let's have a view back in history one of the very first sounds ever hearable on our planet about 4,000 million years ago. Can you guess? The relaxing sound of the sea. But we must remember tonight we are in Belgium, so we're more used to this natural sounds. That's outside, we're inside, it's okay. Second type of sounds are the sounds produced by organisms, so-called biophony. Biophony, vocalizing animal sounds. 
Remember when I talked about the sea? There were the fish, then there were the amphibians, and then approximately 250 million years ago, these funny little guys. Many years later, something terrible happened. The First World War. But then again, something beautiful happened. Right at the end. After the last bomb, the last gunshots, there was this song being heard. The bird song. It gives us a feeling of peace. There are no dinosaurs coming, no tsunamis, and no more gunshots. And if you listen carefully, you could even hear a little hummingbird. The third type of sounds are the sounds produced by you, by us humans, not robots, us. There we can have an impact, the so-called entrophony. I'd like to zoom in on these sounds. The organized sounds, 1937. Hi -ho, hi -ho. So Walt Disney knew by organizing sound, he would reach the pinnacle. What is the pinnacle of organized sounds? Music. So here, Snow White and the Seven Little Dwarfs, they don't only have a visual identity, they have a sound identity. They can be recognized thanks to their unique sounds. In the mid 20th century, I don't know if you'll recognize this sound. What should the corridor sound like? It should sound like quality, and it, sh it should give a feeling, an emotion of safety, an organized sound. 1963. I have a dream. Martin Luther King had his dream indeed, but he picked his words wisely. He organized his speech and repeated these words time after time. He had his unique voice. The next sound is a palindrome. The palindrome sound is exactly the same when you play it forwards or backwards. Bear with me. So my big superhero is not Superman, because Superman needs an S on his chest. But Tarzan, that's a great guy. Remember when I told you in your mom's belly? Well, when your eyes are closed and your ears are open, you will always recognize Tarzan thanks to his unique sound. See what I just did there? I brought Homer Simpson to Brussels. Great. Now, some sounds can even be heard without actually hearing them. I'd like to do a little experiment with you guys. There are two shapes, two objects, and one of them is called Kiki, and the other one is called Booba. So my question to you guys is, who thinks that Kiki is on the right? Okay, a few people, but not many, so do you feel uncomfortable right now? You should. <laughs> we'll take a look at the answer, ready? This was research done in 1929 by scientist Köhler. It was repeated a few times after him. So what does this research show? It shows that there is a link between sound and vision. The way something looks like has an impact on the way it sounds like, the other way around as well. Kiki, sharp object, sharp sound. Booba is round as a shape, as a sound. So 98 people, about 98%, I mean, of all people who did this experiment gave the right answer. The remaining 2% start feeling uncomfortable. You have a higher possibility of being autistic. <laughs> or if you want to feel like supernatural, very clever, feel free if you want to change your answer, possible. But think about it, or ask your colleagues. <laughs> now, 
a brand that really understood this principle of the link between sound and vision is this brand. For the younger people in the room, Intel, the older people in the room know it, but this brand knew by organizing the sound, it would have a sound identity relying on the visual ident identity. Technical error again? No, no, that was Jim Reeks. Jim Reeks worked at Apple and he said, listen up, Steve, I'm a big believer in the power of sounds. I'm also a big fan of the Beatles, so I'll recreate the last chord of A Day in the Life, the Beatles song, and I'll turn it into the Mac startup sound. If you hear this sound, you have an emotion. If you send an email, you hear a whoosh, and you're like, oh no, I forgot my attachment again. <laughs> Same if you empty your bin on your laptop, you have a sound. Functional, organized sounds that give an emotion. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Loving it. We not only see hamburgers, we can even smell them. How amazing is that? But let's be honest, there are a few serious addicts in this room. <laughs> now, these are the organized sounds, but unfortunately, there are these less organized sounds, where I, you, we can have an impact. So you're lying in your bed, you're having this great dream in a very deep sleep, and then... <laughs> Who made this? I never got it. So now you should wake up without any stress. No, this is a Pavlov effect, it gives you stress. It gives you a shot of cortisol, the hormone giving you stress. But luckily, you can go out your home with this terrible alarm clock, you can go to work. And then you arrive at work. <laughs> Noise. This is only a few seconds. Imagine this eight hours, it decreases your productivity. But then you can go out for lunch, no noise. You come back, you're behind your desk, and then you see some people on the street and they're about to do this. <laughs> this has a bad influence on your health, research tells. And I'm sure that the birds will fly away if they hear this. After all these terrible sounds, you arrive at home and your partner says, honey, I can imagine you had a stressful day, but I have a surprise for you. We'll go out for dinner. You arrive at a restaurant, a romantic table for two, candlelight red rose. Honey, how was your day at work? No stress, no, great, great day at work. What, I can hear you. Noise again. But luckily, there is a cocktail party effect that allows us to focus on one conversation. But let's be honest, this noise is not pleasant. Now, if we look back at all these sounds that we've been hearing and listening to in the, in the past few minutes, there's one red thread. They all have this unique sound signature, this unique sound identity. But there's a pitfall. The story of my great-grandfather made me realize how powerful sound can be. But we can't deny there is the power of silence as well. And like my friend Mozart told somebody someday, the music is not in the notes, but it's in the silence in between. So the sounds need to match, like Kiki and Booba, they need to be organized. Otherwise, it's basically sound pollution. So what is my big message to you guys tonight? First of all, you can have an impact with sounds.
Secondly, if the sounds you produce are not better than silence, it's noise, it's sound pollution. And last but not least, it all starts with doing more than just hearing. For a better sounding planets and for sound ecology. Thank you for listening. Thank you.